Jamaica Society for the Blind presents Inspire, our Black History Month feature where we look at the work of the blind and visually impaired and how it contributes to our history. We present Inspire. Welcome to Inspire. In this episode, we will take a look at a visually impaired artist who became a staple in the dance hall, both in Jamaica and overseas. Paul Blake, also known as Frankie Paul, was born on October 19, 1965. Not much is known about his early life, but it was said that his father died when he was very young. His mom, Grace Carr, was a street trader. He had six sisters and three brothers. He was born blind. Paul did an operation on a hospital ship, which led to him getting some partial sight. He later went to New York and obtained a pair of high-powered glasses that helped to improve his sight even more. According to Edgar Morgan, a close friend of Paul, at school, Paul was a very jovial and kind person. The music bug bit him very early, so he started learning the piano, drums, and keyboards. And along with his strong voice, he became a force to be reckoned with, even at that young age. Sometimes he would leave school without the authorities knowing and visit studios and I would be his eyes to avoid the major seeing him. In 1975, Stevie Wonder came to Jamaica and visited the Salvation Army School for the Blind. A concert was held in honor of Stevie Wonder and Paul and other blind and visually impaired persons were asked to perform. Paul said, I was very hesitant to go up there and persons were saying, Go on, Frankie. Go on up and sing with the man, man. He said, no, I'm not going. I'm scared. Well, my teacher came and said, Paul, remember, you weren't scared when you sang on stage last night. I said, oh, Miss James, come on, man. I ain't going up there. And she took me up from out of the seat and brought me up there. After the event, Wonder inquired about the young singer and had words with him telling him that he should pursue a career in music. This was the push that Paul needed. Immediately, Paul left school and kick-started his life in music. After leaving school, Paul would go down to the waterfront in downtown Kingston and just sing. Personnel from the High Times studio, who were also on the waterfront, heard him and decided to record him. At the outset, Paul said, it was not all about the money, I just wanted to sing. Miss Gloria Goff, a friend of Paul, said that Frankie Paul would come by her place to sleep after he would go out to perform. She said that there was this one guy that would take Paul to perform and when he came by us, he would just come with a two-piece chicken meal and $200. Miss Goff says that one day she confronted the man and told him that Paul needed to be compensated for what he was doing. The man said, May I put together something for him, man? Miss Goff said that a few days later, Paul came in very elated, showing her about $2,000. In 1980, at age 15, Paul recorded his first single called African Princess at the High Times Music for his high music label. She's my African princess. She's my African princess. Two years later, he was featured on one side of an LP produced by Channel One with the well-known singer Sugar Minot. This did a lot for Paul's career. Over the next two years, Paul started to record for producers like Henry Junja Laws, Philip Fatis Burrell, King Jamis, and the world-renowned Sly and Robbie. In the mid to late 80s, Frankie Paul started to do international covers on dancehall rhythms, 
songs like Casanova. I am macho Casanova. Sarah. Sarah. Storms operating your eyes. And I want to rock. I want to rock with you, lady. Paul continued to release albums and singles into the 90s, including the big song Big and Broad featuring Supercat and Heavy D. In 1994, Paul moved to Gambia where he lived for over 20 years while still putting out albums and singles. Paul moved back to Jamaica in 2015 because of ill health. He was suffering from diabetes and kidney problems, but still found the time to perform in Jamaica in 2016. He released an album in 2017 called Frankie Paul Sings Dennis Brown in tribute to his musical idol. Frankie Paul's health progressively deteriorated and he spent a lot on kidney dialysis. His leg was amputated also in 2016 and he died on the 18th of May, 2017, in the University Hospital. Frankie Paul is survived by six children and four grandchildren. He has recorded over 30 albums and countless singles. Here is a word of encouragement from Frankie Dancehall Paul. If you're visually impaired or totally blind and in music or in any other... Um, entertainment field, mm -hmm. I advise them to just do the right thing, mm -hmm. stay on the right side, and be good, don't worship the devil, just keep praying to God, and ask for blessing momentarily, and ask for what you need, and God will provide it. Let us salute a visually impaired Jamaican artist who took Jamaica's music to the four corners of the world. Mr. Paul Blake, also known as Frankie Paul, Jamaica Society for the Blind salutes you. So there we have it, black history through the eyes of the blind, their work and their deeds shaping the lives of a people. So join us next time for another in the series, Inspire, a production of the Jamaica Society for the Blind.